ask God to help us before we begin here. Dear Jesus in heaven, you know what we go through on a on a daily basis. We know that the enemy, our enemy, our arch enemy, is not um, another man or woman. It is uh, Satan. It is the fallen angel, the leader. He is our arch enemy, and that uh, we will draw our swords every time we are, if he's amongst us, in the spiritual realm, which is your word, Lord. We are to draw swords when we, when we have his spirit roaming around us, and know that uh, <clears throat> he wants the worst for us, he wants to deceive us. He wants to tempt us. He is also the accuser of the brethren. He is the author of confusion. He is the uh, the manipulator, the uh, the murderer, the uh, the poisoner, all the wrong things that man does. He is he is the author of it all because he will he will he would rather than rather bow the knee. Lord, he will he will um, continue on his campaign to trick humans, and um, only the humans that are awake will get to your kingdom, will get to heaven. Humans like me that are awake, I just pray that um, that uh, I will carry on the torch. I might have a little torch, a little candle, but it's all I need to light up the whole dark cave that, I, that is around me. Thank you, Lord. May my candle never go out or torch as I hold it up for your kingdom's sake. And that, uh, be with me, Lord. Be with all my other disciples, my other brothers and sisters and, and the church and wherever they're at. Be with them today. I say this in your mighty name, majestically, Jesus Christ. Amen. Here we go. Uh, we are in Ezekiel 21. And uh, let's go ahead and begin here. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward Jerusalem and preach toward the sanctuaries. And prophesy against the land of Israel. Tell the land of Israel, Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you. I will draw my sword out of its sheath. And I will cut off from you the righteous and the wicked. Wow, we were just praying about swords and all of a sudden we're reading about it. No such thing as a coincidence. God is backing me up here it sounds like <laughs> awesome seeing then I will cut off from you the righteous and the wicked therefore my sword will go out from its sheath against all flesh from the south to the north wow it says it twice here take the sword out of the sheath you might say it three times all flesh Verse 5, all, all flesh will know that I, Yahweh, have drawn my sword out of its sheath. Wow. It will not return anymore. Therefore, sigh, you son of man. You shall sigh before their eyes with a broken heart and with bitterness. It will, it will be. Then they ask you, why do you sigh? That you shall say, because of the news, for it comes, every heart will melt, all hands will be feeble, every spirit will faint, and all knees will be weak as water. Behold, it comes, and it shall be done, says the Lord Yahweh. So, uh, looks like we uh, said it three times swords out of the sheath three times I predicted it and God is backing me up on it <laughs> I'm not a prophet I can't make predictions you know but 
I do read prophecies in the, in, the, in the Word of God here sometimes. There are prophecies all over that I can... If you need to learn how to read it, read, not necessarily read in between the lines, you just, you know, read outside um, the context and have the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like thinking outside the box. Um, God will give you things in the Spirit. If that makes sense. Verse 8. Yahweh's word came to me saying, Son of man, prophesy. And say, Yahweh says a sword. A sword. It is sharpened and also polished. In the Bible days, they didn't have uh, what we have today. We have, you know, uh, 9mm, AR-15s, AK-47s, M4s. M16s, M60s, they didn't have any of that in the, in the Bible days. Today we have, well, well, those are considered as swords. Those firearms, sidearms, are considered as swords, okay? Um, but that's what they used in those days, in the Bible days. Swords. Actual swords. Polished, sharpened, you know. It is sharpened that it may, may make a slaughter. It is polished that it may be as lightning. Should we make, should, should we then make mirth? The rod of my son condemns every tree. It is given to be polished that it, it may be handled. The sword is sharpened. Yes, it is polished to give it into the hand of the killer. Cry and wail, son of man. For it is on my people. It is on the princes of Israel. They are delivered over to the sword. With my people. Therefore beat your thigh. So. When God is telling them to take them out. That's not murder. You might be a killer. But you're not a murderer. There's a difference. We know what that means. So I'll give you an analogy. So if say. Say if somebody, you're out in public or whatever, right? You're out with your wife, you know, at the ball game or whatever. And uh, you guys go get yourself some food from the stand and go back to the baseball game. And you see you see these these thugs, okay? They, they, you can't see their faces. They come out out of nowhere. And you have your sidearm on you. You have your 9mm on your belt, okay? And... They come out of nowhere with things like weapons. They're like, give us your, give us your stuff, and we won't harm you. Okay, what are you gonna do? So you know, you give them your stuff, and they're not happy. They want to take your wife. They want to kidnap your wife right there. They're like, no, we want your wife as well to go with this. What would you do? You're left in a tough choice there, right? So you, this is what you do. After you give them your wallet, your money, your cash, whatever you have, your gold. You're like, no, you can't have my wife. You can't take her. She, she's, she's my wife. You can't take her, okay? And so they try to they grab her arm, but you're armed. You have your sword on you. You know, they don't know it. It's under your jacket, right? So when they take your wife, they're not looking. You pull out your, your nine millimeter. You're like, give me, give, hand me my wife. Now you have the upper hand. Now you, because you draw the sword on them. Now you have the upper hand. You can retrieve your wife. You can retrieve all your items, and you can say this, you can say, you guys have a choice now, now, now the ball is in my hand, either you guys can leave, or I can call the, the authorities, and all you guys will be um, prosecuted for robbery and kidnapping, you know, you can wait here while I call the authorities, or you can just leave and we'll, we'll forget this happened, that's the choice you have, see, see, the, see the upper hand you have, with having a sword, your own sword, well, our society, for some reason, wants to, uh, you know, don't don't allow the Second Amendment. They they rather, you know, they rather they rather you, you be uh, dependent instead of independent, in a sense. But God doesn't doesn't spare. This is in His Word. God doesn't have swords for no reason. There is a reason why He has swords. There is a reason why He has soldiers carry His own swords. You know. Anyhow, that's an analogy I just gave you there in the situation, you know. Um, verse 13. 
Where are we at? Verse 12 or verse 13? Actually, verse... We'll just start from 11. I think we're in 11. You can't remember. <laughs> so I start to stay off the rapid trail. It is given to be polished that is, it may be handled. The sword is sharpened. Yes, it is polished. Actually, no, we're on 12. I'm sorry. Cry and wail, son of man, for it is on my people. It is on all the princes of Israel. They are delivered over to the sword. No, we're on 13. You see, my memory's not working today. Because I haven't had enough, enough coffee yet. That's why. <laughs> I'm still on my first cup here. So, usually it takes me three cups of coffee to, you know, uh, function at a, at a high level. <laughs> For there is a uh, a trial. What if even the rod that condemns will be no more, says the Lord Yahweh. You therefore, son of man, prophesy and strike your hands together. Let the sword be doubled the third time. The sword of the fatally wounded, it is the sword of the great one, who is fatally wounded, which enters into their wounds. I have set the threatening sword against all their gates, that their heart may melt, their stumblings may be multiplied. Ah, it is made as lightning, it is pointed for slaughter. Gather yourselves together, go to the right, set yourself set yourselves in array, go to the left, wherever your face is set. I will also strike my hands together, and I will cause my wrath to rest. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. Yahweh's word came to me again, saying, Also, you, son of man, appoint two ways. The word of the king of Babylon may come. They both will come out of one land and mark out a place. Mark it out at the head of the way to the city. You shall appoint a way for the sword to come to Rabbi of the children of Ammon and, the, and to Judah and Jerusalem, the fortified. For the king of Babylon stood at the parting of the way at the head of the two ways. Um, hold on one second here. Something happened with my... What happens when you use electronic Bible? They start messing with your phone or something, and then they turn the page on you. Well, we're on 21, right? I think we are. Yeah, 21. We didn't finish 21 yet. It had two ways to use divination. He shook the arrows back and forth. He cons consulted the teratim, teraphim. He looked in the liver. In the right, in his right hand, was the lot for Jerusalem to set battering rams to open the mouth and the slaughter to lift up the voice with shouting to set batter, battering rams against the gates to cast up mounds and to build forts it will be to them as false divination in their sight who have sworn oaths to them but he brings iniquity to memory, that they may be taken. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says, Because you have caused your iniquity to be remembered, and that your transgressions are uncovered, so that in all your doings your sins appear. Because you have come to memory, you will be taken with the hand. You, deadly wounded wicked one, the prince of Israel, whose days has come in a time of the iniquity of the end. The Lord Yahweh says, remove the turban and take off the crown. This will not be as it was. Exalt that which is low and humble that which is high. I will overturn it. Overturn it. Overturn it. He says it three times. I don't know why he says it three times. Well, the number three is consistent with Trinity. The number three is the number of God. God is three in one. Even though he's monolistic, he's only there's only one God, but there's there's three parts to him. There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, um, this will also be no no more until he comes until he comes 
those whose right it is. I will give it. You, son of man, prophesy. There they go again, messing with my, my Bible again. Uh, hold on. Where are we at? You, son of man, prophesy. Verse 28. And say the Lord Yahweh says concerning the children of Ammon and and concerning their approach, a sword a sword is drawn, it is polished with a slaughter, to cause it to devour, that it may be it may be as lightning. Wow. While they see while they see for your false visions, while they divine lies to you to lay on on the necks of the wicked who are deadly wounded whose days has come in the time of iniquity of the end. Cause it to return its ca cause it to return it to its sheep in the place where you were created, and the land of your birth, I will judge you. I will pour out my indignation on you. I will blow on you with the fire of my wrath. I will deliver you in the hand of brutish men, skillful to destroy. In other words, Assassins. That's another word for Buddhist men. <laughs> Translates to assassins. Assassins who are, you know, ready to, uh, you know, make somebody disappear with the sound. <laughs> or a muzzle flash. Who knows? Anyhow, you will be for fuel you to the fire. Your blood will be in the middle of the land. You will be remembered no more. For I, Yahweh, have spoken it. You read... That's it for Ezekiel 21. You read all over where God sends soldiers or contractors to take take out some uh, wicked kings or queens or evil evil men. You yeah, have the story with the uh, remember Jezebel. Um, excuse me. Um, she was an evil queen that would kill prophets of God, and God had enough of it, so God. She would round up prophets and, and disciples all over, and she would have them tortured to death. She would bathe in their blood. She would bathe in, in the blood of saints. That's what she she used to do. Okay, she would fill her bathtub with the blood of saints while she bathed in it. It was kind of like her her uh, you know special way to uh, you know um, I guess you know relax or something in the in the blood of saints. These are that they. they after they tortured the saints to death, they drained their blood out. And Jezebel had a little spa or bathtub. So God had enough. He sent Jehu and his soldiers to take care of Queen Jezebel. And long story short, she was cornered in her tower. And um, Jehu gave the order to throw her out, to throw her out of the window. And, and uh, you know, one of Jehu's men... I think it was Jonathan, right? Was it Jonathan? I forgot one of his soldiers. Threw her out the threw her out of the window and she she did splat on the first on the concrete and that was done. So, um she got dethroned pretty much, the queen did. <laughs> um, that's a warning. If you if you play with God's people or say it's some bad I'm not saying like that something will happen, but you know, God works in mysterious ways. So it's better not, not better not to play with, with, with us or saints of God because God works in the spiritual realms and He will do things. He will get His His payback somehow. He will, and the Word of God says, you know, He is there to avenge the the blood of the saints in a sense. So that's what happens. And the Word of God does not return void. And it's it's uh. It's there to fully equip the saints. There to, for the work at hand, it says. So, um, we, uh, this is the Calvary Chapel channel. And I am, uh, Saint Soshi. Okay? <laughs> you can call me that. Um, um, I will give you only. That's uh, right, you know, Saint Soshi. Holy Spirit inspired scripture. <laughs> when I read from the text. But it itself, is. And, uh, you know, um, don't ever, uh, think that, um, that, uh, th I'm not a, I'm not a, a, uh, a pastor, however, even though... No, I'm, I'm not sure a pastor. That makes sense. Um, I, however, have given...
given sermons to churches. At church. I have. I've spoken to many churches. Given many sermons, sermons in so, churches. You know, in a sense, I can do the work of a of an evangelist, but I I chose to do this on this channel here. So, uh, we're praying for y'all. You guys have a God bless today until the next episode of the Discovery Chapel channel, and I hope that you are blessed by listening to me. And um, until the next one, thank you. everybody so um, I'm gonna kind of glean